I'm asked quite often how to do some basic adjustments on clarinets. One of them is the bridge key and one of them is the crow's foot. So the bridge key, simply put, is the key that connects the upper and the lower joint. Some people also call it the alternate E flat or B flat. So basically, it's the bridge because it comes from one to the other and simply connects them. This key, the purpose of it, is that when we close the lower rings, the upper ring should close at the same time. If it closes early, then it keeps the lower from closing. If it closes too late, then this is open and creates a leak. So essentially, what you want is similar amounts of pressure on a feeler gauge. So if the pads have been put in and you've already checked that the pads individually work with a feeler gauge or with an air machine, then it's a matter of adjusting the two together. So, in this case, you take your feeler gauge. I like the occlusal paper. Some people use cigarette paper, but the occlusal paper to me gives a little more delicate feel. And with minimum pressure on the lower rings, you go around and you can feel if it's even, if it's going down. So this one is. In this particular case, now we do the same on the lower. And what I'm finding is that this slips out, indicating that it's not quite closing. If I press hard, it will close. But you want to always touch just with a very light touch. As a player, if you're playing quickly, you don't have time to really manipulate the keys. So what I've determined in this case is that this key needs to be tipped up slightly. So we've done a series of pliers in our shop which go from smooth jaws so there's no serration on them longer smooth jaws, and then we wrap them with felt, some people use cork, all the way up to thicker, heavy-duty bending pliers. You're going to be a happy person with this. So in the case of the bridge key, we've determined this is going down first. So we can simply take this apart, and with a gentle motion, tip the key up. I don't like to use gross manipulation. I would rather use smaller motions and more of them to kind of coax the key where we want it to be as opposed to try and manhandle it. I find that the adjustment keeps a little better when we do it. So now I'm going to line this up again, making sure it's in the same place. Then I'm going to check with a feeler gauge. This one still feels fine. And now this one feels fine. In fact, if I hold it upside down, you can see that it's not falling out. So as I check around, final test is in playing position. If I close the upper ring and then I press on the lower, I can't feel it in the upper, which is great. And if I am holding lower and I trill here, I don't feel it, so they're completely balanced. So for a player picking this up right now, assuming the ring heights are set to their preference, this is going to feel where the one-on-one -on -one fingering closes perfectly and at the same time, the um, independent motion is not altered by feeling like you have to press harder or lighter on, on the other. The second adjustment, which is very common, is called the crow's foot. And the crow's foot is simply the key that goes underneath the low F sharp and E key. Now on our clarinets, we have little screws for this. Not every clarinet does. If you have the screws, this may be a little bit easier, but you can do it in either case. So the goal is for these two keys, the lowest two, which is the low E and F sharp, to close at the same time. So I've already checked that these seal all the way around. I'm going to artificially make this where it leaks. So now if we look at this, we can see how the, that one is actually moving, which is not what we want. So the technique for fixing this is very simple. I'll act as though there are no screws. If there are, you can do it with a screw. This is closed, thumb pushes up on this key, slightly springing it up, so that these two now go down. Interestingly, when a pad really seals, you can hear it. If it doesn't seal, I'll build a leak in just for a second, you don't get the same sound. So you're listening for that at the same time. Test all the way around. Then you want to test two ways. So this is on the left hand lever, but in many cases one side works and the other doesn't. So then the other way you want to do it is to test the right hand lever. 
And again, both equal now, both holding. A player now playing D to B in the second register could very simply float between those notes with no undue pressure. If you're watching a player play and you see their fingers going white, you know there's a problem. If you can get that adjustment for your clients, they're going to be very happy that they came to you. Good luck.